Hi, this is Lead Pastor Clayton Beck of the Well Community Church. I'm so glad you've joined us to listen to this message. Listen, it's my prayer and hope that you hear the encouraging truth God has for you in His Word today. Listen, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, right? Or this is what we're celebrating. Um, he rode on a donkey to the praise of the people. They laid down palm branches and they laid down even clothing in the path and they shouted this uh, from Matthew chapter 21. They shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I mean, they were so excited. They were under Roman occupation and oppression. And so... I just heard a buzzing. I thought the music was going to start playing again. All right. Um, uh, they were under uh, occupation and oppression. And so Jesus was coming in and they thought he was coming to be their king to deliver them from that. They didn't realize he was coming to be their Lord and King, their eternal Savior. But the problem was is that the, the people, that even though they were under this oppression, and even though they wanted Jesus to be their King, they weren't looking to change their traditions. They weren't looking to change their rituals. They weren't looking for a personal relationship. They didn't want to change their religion. Again, they just wanted deliverance from their situation. So when the people, again, what Palm Sunday represents, reflects on, is that the people went from, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, to by the end of the week, those same people, instead of praising him, are shouting, crucify him, crucify him. It's really kind of baffling, isn't it? How they went from that to that in just a week. But listen, you know people, right? As people, we're, we're pretty typical people, aren't we? Well, nothing's changed in all those years. We're going to go to an event that took place. Um, we're not going to really focus on that triumphal entry. We're going to take a little different slant on this, all right? And uh, if you've got, we'll have the verses up here. They're in the bulletin. If you've got a smart device, you can go to Uversion events, and you can pull the notes up there. But um, Matthew chapter 26, verse 6 there's some debate about this. This either took place the night before the triumphal entry or possibly took place the evening of that entry, okay? But um, verse 6, Matthew chapter 26, says this. says, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume, poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She's poured this perfume on me to prepare for my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Alright? So that's our text. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, again, this takes place just days, really the week, within the week, before Christ is going to be crucified. And it tells us again, he went to a home of a man named Simon. Simon, it says, had had leprosy. The Bible doesn't say Jesus healed him of it, but more than likely he did because leprosy didn't have a cure. I mean, it's not like you got cured from leprosy unless you were healed by Jesus. People would basically die of that disease. Uh, there was no cure for it. Uh, so more than likely Jesus had healed him. And Jesus and his disciples, they're all sitting around eating. Uh, this is recorded in three of the Gospels. Um, uh, in other scripture in John, it tells us Lazarus, who he raised from the dead, was there, and Mary and Martha was there. It's very possible that Mary is this woman that's talked about here. Um, or, I mean, it would be Mary. Um, 
But the disciples are all eating and everything. Jesus is eating. And then this woman comes in, again, probably Mary. And she's got this uh, jar, this flask of very expensive perfume. And it's in this alabaster jar. And um, she's going to come over and she's going to pour it on his head and anoint him. Now, I'm not an expert in expensive perfume. Um, to be quite honest, if it goes from five to that, that ten dollar ring is kind of a break point for me, you know. <laughs> the real truth is, is I'm trying to find that dollar knockoff stuff. And the family dollar or dollar general, whichever, I think the price has gone up to three dollars. I really kind of don't doubt about it. But that three bucks, I work, you know. Um, these expensive perfumes are some I didn't even know about these. I got two or three. Uh, I've never heard of this because, again, it's not where I shop. But uh, maybe some of you, uh, you all know Ralph uh, Lauren, you know, famous clothing line, the the polo. Uh, you remember, I, you know, back in the 80s when I was in school, you know, that polo was such a, you know, you knew the kid that had polo, right? And it just walks in the whole room, just, you know. But uh, anyway, they make a whole other line of perfume. I didn't know about this. It's called the Ralph Lauren Perfume Notorious. It's only bought from Harrods in London. I don't know what Harrods is. Obviously, a fancy place. It's three thousand five hundred forty dollars a bottle. A bottle. All right. Um, oh, it gets better. Um, there's another perfume I've not heard of. It's called Jar Perfumes, the Bolt of Light. Bolt of light. It doesn't really sound like a woman perfume, does it? It sounds more like a guy, but it is for women. But I'm going to just read it here. It is a strong and fresh perfume that has an apparently similar smell to the smell of the air just after a bolt of lightning has struck. Oh, I need to capture that. You know? Have you have you ever gone out there and said, Did you did you smell that? I mean, it's, did you hear that? I get that, but did you smell that? And then Let's get that in a bottle. I, I don't know how that works. But anyway, $765 an ounce. An ounce. Okay. But I mean, yeah, again, capturing the smell of the lightning. All right. Got one more. There's more here, but I just got one more I'll share. Uh, Clyde Christian's Imperial Majesty Perfume. Not making this up. Only 20 bottles made. $215,000. Now, it does help the perfume bottle is encrusted with diamonds, but still, oh, Chris is like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> then it's all worth it, right? 215000 that's just crazy stuff. Okay, I, you know, I don't live in that kind of world, right? I'm not sure I even live in this kind of world. This, this uh, perfume, we'll kind of get to it in a, in a moment, but it was expensive stuff. Very expensive stuff. Um, again, we'll get to this, but this was really, it, was, uh, it wasn't used for daily use. This would have been used when someone would die. And they would basically, you know, there wasn't embalming and stuff in those days. So, you know, two, three days, that body's going to smell. They'd go in and they would anoint the body with perfume and spices and things like that. And this is... One of those things that that would be used for. All right. Um, she's got this expensive perfume, again, in this jar made of alabaster. Alabaster is a stone, it's kind of like white marble if you're just trying to picture it in your mind. Uh, the jar uh, was filled, it was probably sealed with a type of wax. Um, but typically, in order to use it, because again, it's not something that you're just going to use every day, you're, it's really going to get used one time that they would just either break that seal or they break the neck of that flask, that jar. And then, again, you just use it. You know, there's no keeping it at that point once you break that neck. So she took that jar of expensive perfume, she broke it, she poured it on Jesus' head. The Bible tells us in John that after pouring it on his head, that Mary actually anointed his feet with it too. And, uh, again, therefore, it was only used that once. Uh, but you can imagine, think about the disciples. You're sitting there, you're just enjoying a meal, and all of a sudden, this woman, Mary, comes in, breaks this jar. Everybody there knows what that kind of jar is for, and then pours it on his head, and then puts it on his feet. Now, 
That'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Right? It'd be like, what's, you know, what's going on? Um, verse 8. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. That term indignant, that's just a fancy word. It means annoyed. The disciples were annoyed. They were annoyed a lot of times with Jesus and things that went on. Um, let me read you a verse. This is again about this passage. It's in Mark. That says, some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. So it's not just that they're upset and annoyed. They actually get after this woman, Mary, and just like, you know, paraphrasing here, you're an idiot. What are you doing? What a waste. And even a belittling of... You should know better than this. That stuff's so expensive. If you're going to just waste it, there's poor. Jesus has been teaching about giving to the poor. I mean, you don't, you know, you're an idiot. What a waste. Listen, first point here, and you need to understand this, all right, is that worship, true worship, is never, ever, I want to read you some verses. It's in Chronicles in the Old Testament, talking about God. You just, just listen to it, all right? Won't be up here, just listen. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 23. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He's to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his presence. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nation, the Lord reigns. Now listen, when you hear those verses, do you think that worship to God can be a means? Do you think about who God is and how powerful He is and all that He's done, all that He's going to do, can you, can you out-worship God? What do you think Jesus had to... I mean, they're annoyed. They get after her. But what are they ultimately saying? If they're telling her what a waste for worshiping Him, what's that saying? Jesus, you're not worth it. You're not worth that. We should have got the family dollar for you. <laughs> right? Listen, there's never a waste in true, genuine worship to God. That perfume she poured, just to put it in perspective, it was expensive. Uh, it was, I would tell this was about 300 denarii. All right? Um, to give you an idea, a person would work all day for one denarii. You're talking a, a year's worth of wages. In that little jar, alabaster jar of perfume. And when she broke it, that's what the disciples saw. Just the years worth of wages were away. Right? I know this is in my notes, but it just, it just came to me. Um, and sometimes, even with our, our giving, and guys, you know, the Welsh Church, we're not about money. But money can't be a form of worship can it? because it. it it's one of those things that where, where your where your wallet is is really where your heart is, right? Because <laughs> you spend on where your passion is. Um, you ever sometimes you you think about your tithe or dropping in an offering or whatever it is, and you just think there's that moment of you need that for something. 
or did that make me too much? When you really think about it, again, it just came to my mind because of this whole context. Think about the, the God of all the universe. It's just nothing, nothing's too elaborate for that. You know? Nothing. It's just not a waste. And God's not about money either. He's just about your heart. That's what we were singing. Here's my heart, Lord. That's what he wants. When she broke that box, wouldn't he know she's got my heart? What do you know about the disciples? They're not there. I'm working on it. Maybe by the end of the week. Let's see another truth here. Truth here, verse 8 and 9. Second thing here. Doing good, now listen to this, doing good should never come before worship, but from worship. Alright? Hang on to that thought as we get into this. Doing good should never come before worship, but it has to come from worship. Verse 8 and 9 again. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. Now, what could be wrong with helping the poor? Uh, nothing, right? I mean, were the disciples right? Should that jar have been, if she's going to use it, been used to help the poor? I mean, after all, wouldn't God have favor of that? He, he says in his word, let me read you the verse, it's in Proverbs, whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing. But those who close their eyes to poverty will be cursed. So, I mean, aren't they really right in what they're saying? They thought they were. They thought, listen, Jesus has been teaching about giving to the poor. I mean, they're sitting there thinking they're right. What's Jesus have to say? Again, Matthew 26, verse 10. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. In Mark, when it's given an account of this, Jesus actually turns to them and says, leave her alone. Right? Pretty, pretty harsh words. You know, they all got in trouble with Jesus then, right? Listen, doing good service never comes before worship. It has to come from worship. Worship's first. Worship always has to come first. Let me read this to you. Somebody wrote this. They said, Nothing, including even service rendered to Christ, is more important than listening to Him and honoring Him with our hearts. Someone wrote, True worship comes from a willing heart of obedience. Uh, true obedience must come from a willing heart, nothing else. It's not a genuine obedience when it's carried out grudgingly. If obedience is a form of sacrifice and offering, then it must comply with the position of God with regards to every offering that we bring in. God loves a cheerful giver. He delights in every act of worship and sacrifice that comes from a willing heart. Let me kind of put this in perspective. It kind of makes sense so that you're not confused on this point. You can get busy doing things for God. But at the same time, you can be doing those things without God. Make sense? You can come to church and you can leave and you can think, all right, I put my time in. Right? You can give and say, oh, listen, I'm giving. If there's no worship, then you might as well not even come. I hate to say that. <laughs> we always want people to go. But you know what I mean. If if the heart's not there when you give, listen, don't get it. Don't get it. And I I strongly believe in that. Because again, God he, he wants a cheerful gift. He wants somebody that gives without grudging them. He wants the heart. He wants the worship. What happens is, and I've seen this many times over ministry, I've seen it with people, I've seen people that you know, they come into a church and they get just on fire and things are going just great. And then it fizzles. And I always wonder, and if you ever wonder what pastors sit around and talk about, they talk about fizzle. <laughs> what happened? Things are going so good. And listen, every situation is different, but, but typically what I usually find, it may be weeks or months or years down the road is... I don't know even church it, 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 it kind of it was, you know, it was all about activity. It wasn't about worship. That's why it's so important 
that you spend time in God's Word every day. Right? This can't be where you only get fed. You gotta get fed every day. You all eat every day, right? We had we had great it was great this week. We Isaac was in, brought his girlfriend up. I'm like, man, son, she's awesome. Don't blow it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rebecca was telling me he was. They were all all the kids that were making lunch yesterday, and he made a couple of sandwiches and stuff. And so they got done. They were all going to the mall, and um, they all got done eating. Of course, all the girls had one sandwich. Isaac had two, you know, and some chips and other stuff. Well, then when he got to leave, there was like a moment of hesitation, and, and his girlfriend, uh, her name, uh, Bri, uh, Brian, Brian, sorry. Uh, we call her Bri or Breezy, uh, but. Uh, uh, she said, well, what's going on? And he goes, yeah, so, I think I might want another <laughs> She's so sweet. She's like, well, you can have another sandwich. <laughs> you know how it is after married so long. What, you need another sandwich? <laughs> right? I didn't know where I was going with that. But <laughs> Listen, God wants our heart, right? He wants our heart. All he wants, he wants us to worship him with our heart. All right. Third thing here. Don't miss the message. It's all about God. Look at verse six, seven, and eight. But Jesus replied, "Leave her alone. I criticize her for doing such a good thing to me. You will always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want to. But you will not always have me." She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. Listen, when they, she broke that jar, poured it on his head, anointed his feet with it, the disciples, they, didn't, they weren't sitting there and they weren't having a conversation where they were like, that's weird. Why would she do that? That's normally for when somebody dies. I don't know what this is about. You know what I mean? They just went, you're stupid. You're an idiot. Why would you do that? Listen, they missed the message. When you look back at the text, they missed what was going on because guess what? Their eyes were on the money. Their eyes were on the woman. The only thing their eyes weren't on was Jesus. Jesus said, she's done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. Let me have you just think about something here. Now I remember that whole eating story. You want to eat every day. You need to be fed in God's word every day. All right, and dine with you. All right, dine with you. Funny how the mind works, right? <laughs> Uh, she's done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. Listen, how does she uh, how does she know to do that? Think about that. I don't know if you thought about that, but you know the story. What prompted her to walk in there and to someone who's living anoint them with a year's worth of perfume that's used for when somebody dies? You think she thought of that on her own? You think God, through the work of the Holy Spirit, had to prompt her? Maybe she was truly, I, I know she was truly listening to everything Jesus said. Maybe she just, you know, we all know women are smarter than men. She connected the dots sooner, right? And so as Jesus said, she's done what she could. She's coming here. She's worshiping him. She's showing her devotion to me. Again, there's only two things here. Only two ways she could have known. Either God through the Holy Spirit prompted her, and because, again, she was listening to what he's been saying and teaching, and she got it. Listen, the message is never about the work. It's always about Christ. You guys listen, if you listen to anybody on TV, any other speakers or preachers, 
I was we were we were down in South Carolina, and I had flipped on the channel, and uh, you know it was some televangelist, and I know you guys have heard it before, but listen, just send in your six hundred dollars, and you can plant a seed of favor. That's how it goes, right? At seed of favor, and it's amazing they not only have a six hundred dollar seed of favor, but a four hundred dollar seed of favor, and a two hundred dollar seed of favor, and even if it's just a twenty dollar seed of favor, God will bless your seeds. You know what you find a lot of times when you hear all that noise <coughs> is you hear a lot of people tout about the work, but they've missed the whole message. It's all about Christ. Because it's about His work. A lot of churches and places you go to, different denominations, it's all about keeping the rules. You know, the giving, the you miss such and such, what well, all that. You got to step back from all that. And you gotta think, listen, is it about that or is it about that? And what he Listen to what Jesus told the disciples, and it's what he's telling you and I in Matthew 26, verse 12 and 13. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. And here we are today. Talking about that thing she did. The thing that the disciples said, what a waste. He said, that's not a waste. <laughs> she knows who I am. She's showing that I have her heart. She's showing her devotion. She's showing that she's not got caught up in the work, the acts, the service, but she's all about the message. The very fact we're discussing this today is a fulfillment of Jesus' words. Her deeds are remembered because, again, she understood the message. The whole time the disciples' eyes were on the money, the whole time the disciples' eyes were on the woman, the whole time the disciples' eyes were not on Jesus, where were her eyes? On nothing but Jesus. And her actions are rewarded. Because she did it out of genuine worship. Hey, it's Pastor Clayton again. I hope you were both challenged and encouraged by today's message. I want to invite you to come to the well. You can also visit us online at the well church.com and you can find us on Facebook. Until next time, remember that God's Word is the truth that you need today.